welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to share how I create these quilted, well in this case a quilted journal cover. Um, I, I spoke about this in a previous um, video, how I used this for a very large, it was my junk journal January um, journal, and uh, it just got so big I needed a, a larger um, a larger than usual. Let me get, so this is an average for a couple of um, Traveler's Notebook sized journals. This one can fit four, but uh, I could only get two of mine in there because I, I think I put too many pages in my journals. So here are a couple of journals that are, I think, you know, kind of a basic size uh, for a uh, cover this size and they'll fit in there I think perfectly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as my template to cut out this quilt to make a journal cover for a friend and this because here let me move the little decorations there's a little bit of purple in this quilt piece and so I chose this lavender fabric for the interior it's a pretty good weight too I like to have kind of a, a sturdier weight for the um, the lining of my journals and I also use a little bit of this Pellin um, stabilizer this is firm I believe this is only firm not ultra firm so um, it's made by Pellin I get it at Joanne and um but you can get it online i'm sure they sell it at amazon so that's what i use for the interior to stabilize it to make it just a little bit a little bit more especially if you're using a quilt that's been around for a long time that's pretty well worn as you can see it's got um, places where it's actually the um, fabric has worn out that doesn't bother me hopefully it won't bother my friend I like it. it. It gives it character. So the first thing I'm going to do is, because I use um, fabric to uh, to um, seal the ends of the journal cover, I don't worry about allowing for more to fold in or anything like that. So, and the other thing that I'm going to be doing differently with this with um this journal is because I'm going to have two journals in it. I'm going to I'm not going to use this ribbon. I'm going to be um putting um a, like a tab on each side so I can loop um the elastic band through it. So, for instance, this is the elastic I that I have that I'm going to be using. I don't do these. Uh, grommets as well as the gal that made this. I just cannot do it correctly. And it's just to me to when I go to sew these edges on these get in the way. So it makes it just a little bit difficult for me to decorate these because of that. So I'm going to like I said make a tab. I'm going to loop the elastic through that and then she'll be able to put her two journals in there. As far as the decor goes, I've got plenty of doilies, plenty of yo-yos and buttons and charms and all kinds of fun stuff that I'll add to it late in a later um, uh, that I'll add to it in a later video. So today I'm just going to today I'm going to cut this and I'm going to do some of the basic things and then um, I'll and I think I may try to do the decorations in a separate video, but we'll see how that works out. First thing I'm going to do is, let's see, I think I want to cut it on this side. I've used this quilt for so many projects that it, I'm, I'm starting to finally run out. So what I have here is a friction erasable pen. And I'm going to use this on my fabric because if you hit this with an iron or any kind of heat, it will erase it. And it's a lot easier than many of the other things. Measuring would help too, but I'm just going to go ahead and use the pen because of this edge here.
Okay, I have my rectangle. Let's make sure it's the right size. Yeah, looks pretty good to me. I don't like to spend too much time on, you know, measuring if I don't need to. Especially for these. For some reason, these have a tendency to just work themselves out. So let me show you. Here's the black pen. I'll just use my heat gun. There, all cleaned up. So what I'll be doing is I will be cutting these two, this to match this, to, those will be the same size. And this stabilizer, I want this to be a little bit less, maybe in about a quarter of an inch um, from the cover. Because when I sew, let me show you real quick. These are my scrap, this is my scrap basket. And a lot of these pieces in here are left over from uh, log cabin quilts that I've made in the past. Some of this fabric has been around for a long time. I think I made this a Christmas quilt with that uh, close to 20 years ago. So these are what I use for the edges, super simple. They just go over the edges and then I do a running stitch or a blanket stitch or a slip stitch or whatever kind of um, inspires me at the time. I try to do more than one just because it looks kind of fun. But it's, like I said, super simple. And I found this in amongst my scraps. I believe that this was, yeah, this was the edging to a um, quilt runner. And so I thought that this would make a very good tab for my elastic. I'll sew it on there with my machine, and then I'll loop the elastic through there. I want it to be a little bit higher than that, but yeah, I'll loop the elastic through there so that my friend can put both of her journals in. All right, so I'm going to get myself organized. I'm, I'll do some cutting, and um, I'll be right back. All right, nice and ironed so that I can get a better measurement. As a matter of fact, I decided that it would probably be a good idea for me to measure this real quick so you know how big it is. All right, 13 by nine and a quarter. So let's, wait, let's make sure, yeah. No, it's not exactly 13, oh, very close to 13. And once you put the, um, the edging pieces on, it does grow a little bit more, just so you know. Now it would be smart for me to get my rotary cutter out, but Okay, now I'm going to use this as my template for the stabilizer. I'm going to cut it at size and then trim it once, I've, once I have it cut because I want it to be straight.
a person that's very much used to um, quilting and making clothes and being super precise with my cutting. Believe me, this, this does, this is a little painful, but it'll work. Yeah, it's right to size. It's a little wonky, but they always are. Once we start sewing on the edges, you don't even see it. All right, so I want what I'm going to do now is make the little tabs. So I'm going to have one at the top and one at the bottom. Make sure. Halfway point. This is the easiest way for me to find the halfway point. I could measure till the cows come home and I'll still mess it up. All right, so I'm going to put a pin in. So I'll just put a pin there. And put a pin there. Or you can mark it with a pen. It doesn't matter. Come on, here we go. Okay. So there's a, you can see the line there that I kind of finger ironed. So I'm not sure if that's going to be I want it to be thick enough. I don't want this to tear with, with use when the elastic's in there. Um, it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to sew over this, but I have a small plan for that. Hopefully that'll work. I've not used this technique before. I'm kind of making it up as we go. I had it in my mind, but hopefully it will also work. see I, want, I don't want it to be too low and then it gets in the way of the journal so but then we're bulking it up a lot but like I said I want it to be strong so this if it works I'll be cutting this off, but it's nice to have a little bit of leeway. About two and a half inches. Okay, so I tried to get it as... Uh, I, I got it really close there. So hopefully that will not be a problem once I get everything sewn together. That one's a little bit better, but that one is a bit close. So we'll have to wait and see. It was so thick, it was just really hard for me to control it. Another option is, is to just go below it a little bit but then my opening won't be as big. So, we'll have to wait and see. So I'm gonna trim this off. Because this is not a wearable and it probably won't be getting thrown around too much. And I'm going to be doing so much stitching over it that, that how close that is to that will probably be okay. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to put my sandwich together. I'll be right back. Okay, my little quilting gizmos. Hold on. Here we are. I'm going to clip it all together. And then I'll show you the next step. 
Okay, I've got it all clipped together now. Um, if you don't have these clips, you can use straight pins. Those will work just as easily. And um, the next step is to grab strips of fabric. These are one and a half inch wide. So I have just a lot at different lengths, but I have a lot of one and a half inch wide scraps. So these are what I'm going to be using as the binding along the edges. And that's the first thing that I do just to hold it all together so that it's ready to go to decorate. Um, I will be putting one of these ribbons so that she can wrap it and tie it. Oh, wait, that doesn't go that way. It goes this way. Hold on. Just in case you didn't see my earlier video, let me show you how this works. There. And then it ties. And it holds the... Um, journal together when they're like super wide alligators alligator mouths so yeah I'm going to get this organized so that I can show you how I attach these it's really super simple let me go get some more supplies let me show you real quick how I get started on this I'm going to I like to try to start to where I'm not necessarily starting at a corner because I mitered them and it gets a little difficult. So I'll start here. Now, do I want this red? I'm thinking I don't want, I love those daisies, but I'm thinking about putting a different color scheme. There's a little bit of red there, but this is really bright. This one might this one might work yeah that one will work I think I like that so what I'll do sometimes is I will lay sorry about that I'll lay them down and kind of get an idea of color and sometimes I'll go a little dark sometimes I'll go a little light And even though this one is definitely wider than um, one and a half inches, that doesn't bother me. I like having it to be a little bit um, crazy, wonky. I'm not sure what the, the term for it would be. Let's see. I've been loving this. I might try that. That's a little too wide. I like the rough edges. Oh, but now it's crooked. So that one might not work. Let's see. Those are thin. So I like this, I like this green. And there's enough of it if it doesn't tear right. Oops. There. Okay. Still looks a little crooked, but that's okay. That'll work. So this is just a general idea of how I'll put these on here. I think I'm gonna start with this one because it's nice and long and maybe I will be able to get around that corner. Okay, let's try that.
Okay, so I'm just going to show a quick miter on this. I'm really not good at this, so please excuse my... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch it there. Take this one off. Pinch it there as close to the edges as I can. I'm sure there's people out there on YouTube that will show you how to miter in a much better fashion than I am, but I do this just pretty primitive. It's a pretty primitive sewing project. There we go. Okay, let's see if that'll work. Get that on there. There. So once I get that going, it's, it seems to work out okay. Let me grab my... See, those are my, the corners on mine. I just catch it on that corner with the, um, with the thread, and it holds. Like I said, these aren't wearables. These are just things that you are going to toss around in your craft room with your journal in it. I don't think you're going to really necessarily need it to be. Um, and, and, you know, the way I do things... If this were to come undone or something, I would just do a slip stitch. I would just sew it, and it would just make it look even more, you know, worn and torn and fun and old. When you're working with a quilt that's been through the through the world as much as this one, I doubt if a couple of extra um, stitches are going to make too much of a difference. So let me show you how I... I just continue it. I don't hem, I don't fuss, I just put it on there. Okay, I'll do another miter, pinch, as close to the top as you can, get kind of a angle on it on both sides, press down, grab a pin or a clip, and when you get to that point, if for any reason you have to fuss with it to make it, um, to make it correct and look the way you want it to look, Sometimes this is this is kind of difficult because I'm working around my camera. So but sometimes it'll be a little bit see how that is. You just you'll just want to kind of fuss with it just a little bit. But you I don't like that big point, so try to get it up close to there and push down. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to stay on. There we go. Just pull on that a little bit. So now we're getting close to this. And when I go to sew this, I'm going to try to um I'm going to try to get my needle and I'm going my yeah, my needle. I'm going to have to use um my thimble to push my needle through all of those layers, but that's why I have these available. Okay, I want another clip on that. This is when you want to start thinking about whether or not you need more clips or more pins to keep it secure. I'll grab a pin real quick and show you. There. Now I may not have caught the back of that, but I, at least I've got that down enough where when I go to hand sew that, it'll catch all of the layers. All right, so this is a rather large needle with a good size eye. All right, so I'm going to get this started just to show you a little bit of how I do this. Super basic. Go underneath the binding to hide the knot. And what I like to do is I like to go back one stitch, push it through, it's on both sides. It just holds it down the first stitch. 
when you have a knot just makes it easier so one of the things that I want to point out is that when I'm doing this I do like to try to get all of the layers but if I don't I I'll go back I and I'll make more stitches sometimes I go high sometimes I don't like what you know where you know how tight it is I like to have lots of color I like to have see I went low here because I felt like this was a little bit high so I went back low again you know so I, I just I do several rounds of stitches and it goes by pretty fast I'm not going to do the whole thing here on the the camera but I just wanted to kind of show you how simple this is I mean that's the whole idea um, if you were to do this project um, without using an old quilt like this, um, you can just get some um, quilt batting. They, they sell them in small portions at, um, at uh, fabric stores. So um, you don't have to buy enough for a whole quilt. You can just buy small amounts by the yard. And I'll probably do, uh, I'm going to do more of these videos on how to make these because they are so easy and they're really fun. And if you have some sewing um, ephemera, you know, or supplies, it's a great way to use up small pieces of fabric. Like, um, let's see, let me show you real quick. If you had a, even just a small piece like this. You can just do that. You can cut that to size and just sew that in. I'll cut it to size when I'm done sewing it because I know that I will not do it right. Just for a little touch of color, just something different. If you're a person like me that doesn't throw anything away, this is a great way to use them up. You, it's a great way to use supplies up, scraps up, that kind of thing. You know what I'm trying to say. Okay, that's enough of that. All right. I mean, I could leave that. But that's kind of cute, just a little addition. I'm going to go around the corner real quick, just, just so you can see how I do that part. Because what I'm, I'm going to do, I want to do um, most of this off camera because watching me sew is, an, is like watching paint dry. So, unless you enjoy watching paint dry. Okay, so... So I'm going to try to, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm doing this on camera is just, it's difficult enough as it is without doing it on camera. Yeah, I just put myself, there we go. Okay, I got them both. There, try to get that back in there a little bit straighter. And if you feel like you need to go back a stitch to catch that, that's always an option. And then... there yeah you can go big on these stitches you can go small on these stitches it doesn't matter um, how big or how small it will it will all join up and be just fine hold on okay so there's my mitered corner I know that's a, that looks a little Hmm, could have done a little bit better on that stitching, but you know when it when I go over this again with a second row of stitching, it'll probably look fun. It'll be fine. Okay, so that's it for right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue sewing around here, doing the stitching. I'll probably do probably do two rows, and um, then I'll be back. All right. Well, I finished um, all of the edging and stitching. I did a double row. In some places, you could even consider that a triple row. I added another little 
tab piece here. I think I'm just going to leave this one as is. Maybe fray it up a little bit. Sometimes I'll put these in the washer to kind of get these end pieces kind of scrunchy and, you know, frayed. But this video is going into overtime as far as how long I've been doing this. And I want to um, show you what my next step is. And then in my next video, I'll show you how I decorate. So I've never tried this before. I'm going to just do it on camera. Oh, that went right in. And then this one. Try to get it in there. All right. I'm using a paintbrush to kind of open it up a little bit. Let's see if that'll work. Oh, that did it. Going in the right direction. Yay! So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this together loosely and my friend will be able to adjust it to how she wants it. Um, I don't know if she needs that much. I, I would, I'd rather give her too much than not enough. So I'm just going to do a simple square knot, tie it off, and then the owner can do any kind of adjusting on it that they want. Shouldn't make that too tight, but I'll cut it off. And here's the size journals that will probably go in. By the middle. Of course, she will tie it a lot tighter, but I don't want to tie it too tight and that, then not give her enough elastic. Pretty big. Let's see if we need a bigger journal. This is my average size journal. There, see? There we go. That's what we're talking about. And um, if she wants to make it hold more, she can just get another circle. Here, I can make a circle. Make a circle. I'm, I'm not going to cut this because I want to just demonstrate. Putting it in there like that. And then you can have it on there and you can put two more on there. So you can put four all together. So I'm just going to leave it as big as it is. Because that's what works for me. So there are a couple of things that I'd like to point out before I let you go. And one of them is um, on these tabs where I wanted them to be nice and strong. I did a back stitch with my um, embroidery thread on them on both sides just to make sure that they were nice and secure. I'm not showing you how to do that here. There's lots of videos on how to do different embroidery stitches that you can look up that would give you much better instructions than I will. The other thing that I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about is some of the supplies, like this elastic. I need to do a little bit of homework on exactly what size this is. This is my favorite size for making these, but I don't have the size of this on hand, meaning how round it is, how the circumference, you know. So I'll do that and I'll make sure that I can, I have a, a link to a place where it may be Amazon or on Etsy that you can find this to purchase. And the same with this Pellin stabilizer. I'll make sure that I put in the description box where you can find some of these supplies. If you have any questions on any of the supplies, if I wasn't very clear on any of the points in this video, please leave um, a comment and let me know and ask your questions and I'll get back to you on that. So thank you once again so much for joining me today. And in my next video, I'll be doing some decorating with doilies and embroidery and embroidery pieces like this one and buttons and just a lot of fun stuff. So I hope you'll join me for that. So until next time, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.